All right, so number one when we're multiplying, we took the square root of 10 times 2 square root of 5. So we're foiling here. So square root of 10 times 2 square root of 5, I'm multiplying the front numbers together and the end numbers together. This is technically 1, but 1 times 2 is 2. Square root of 10 times the square root of 5 with square root of 50. We then have to think, can I simplify that? Does 50 have any factors that are perfect squares? In this case, it did. It was 25 times 2. So we took the square root of 25, which was 5. We multiplied it by the number in front, which gives me 10 square root of 2. I'm going to switch colors here because now we're going to do the next one. We're going to do square root of 10 times the outside, which is negative 3. Square root of 10 times a negative 3. We think of it like we do when we take negative 3 times an x. We just put the number in front of that square root, since this is under a square root and this is not, so we get negative 3 square root of 10. Now with 10, we can't simplify it because 10 doesn't have any factors that are perfect squares. 2 times 5, neither of those are perfect squares, so we just left that the same. We then have to do the inside pair. So on the inside pair, we took negative 2 times 2 square root of 5. We're going to multiply the whole numbers together. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 square root of 5. And then we're going to do the last pair. The last pair says we're taking negative 2 times negative 3. Negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6. None of these are like terms because they don't have the same square roots on the end, so I'm just going to list my four answers. 10 square root of 2 minus 3 square root of 10 minus 4 square root of 5 plus 6. And that big long thing goes in for your answer. That's what we got, right? <laughs> The second one there, if I redo that one quick, foiling that out, first terms together, so 3 square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Again, if you want to put that 1 there, you could. 3 times 1 is 3. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25. Nice thing happens when those are both the same. This number turns into a perfect square, and we can then take the square root of that number. The square root of 25 is the nice whole number 5, so that when we multiply 3 times 5, we just get the nice number 15. We then have to do the outside pair. 3 square root of 5 times 6 square root of 6. 3 square root of 5 times 6 square root of 6. The 3 times the 6 is 18. Square root of 5 times square root of 6 is square root of 30. Now 30 is kind of a big number, so you got to think, can I take out any perfect squares? My factors are 30, 1 times 30, and 30 is not a perfect square. 2 times 15, well 15 is not a perfect square. 3 times 10, 10 is not a perfect square. And 5 times 6, 6 is not a perfect square. So there's no factors that are perfect squares, so I just have to leave that big number underneath there, square to 30. Then I'm going to do my inside pair. My inside pair says I'm going to take 6 square root of 6 times the square root of 5. Again, if you wanted to put the 1 there, you could. 6 times 1 is 6. Square root of 6 times square root of 5 is square root of 30. And we found out before we couldn't simplify the square root of 30. So that's our answer there. The last terms, 6 square root of 6 times another 6. Oh, it's going to move out. <laughs> Dang it, I don't know what's going on with my board today. I'll get a drink before I start that all over. It's going to be a long day if the board keeps erasing. <laughs> so, oh, now it doesn't even want to write. Okay, now it's writing. Okay. So, 3 square root of 5 times the square root of 5 again was 3 square root of 25, which we said simplified into just 5. 
and we had a 15 there for our first term. Our second term, we had 3 square root of 5 times 6 square root of 6, and we had 18 square root of 30 there before. Then we did the inside, 6 square root of 6 times the square root of 5, and we had 6 square root of 30. And now back to the last pair. I don't think it likes me to write with a black one. I'm not going to use that again. <laughs> My last pair is 6 square root of 6 times 6 square root of 6, which is going to give me 36 square root of 36. Notice again, we had two perfect, or two squares that were the same, square roots that were the same. We got a perfect square. The square root of 36 is the nice whole number 6. So 36 times 6 was 216, if I remember right. We then can add our like terms together. So we're going to be able to add the 15 plus the 216, and then the 18 squared of 30 plus the 6 squared of 30. So 15 plus 216 was 231? 231 plus 18 squared of 30 plus 6 squared of 30. We're just adding the 18 and the 6. So we got 24 square root of 30 for our answer. Now to number 3. All right, board. <laughs> Stay there. Okay, so when we FOIL, we're going to start and multiply what together first? The first two. The first two. The 2 squared of 3 times the 2 squared of 3. And when we take 2 squared of 3 times 2 squared of 3, we get? 4 trials. 4, four square, trials. square root of what? Oh, 9. 9. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 squared of 9. You then said, oh, 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is? 3. 3. And then you took 4 times 3. 12. And you got 12. Just the plain old 12. Nothing left over extra on that one. We just got a 12. So then we did the outside pair. The outside pair says I'm going to multiply what together? The 2, 3, 2. 2 squared of 3. 2 squared of 3 uh, minus times negative 4 squared of 5. Times negative 4 squared of 5, exactly. So multiplying those, we would get? Multiply on um, negative 8 squared of 15. And square root of 15, we can't simplify any farther. It doesn't have any perfect squares in it. So we do the inside pair. The inside pair says we're going to multiply what? 4 squared. 4 squared of 5, five times, times, times the 2 squared of 3. 2 squared of 3. And when we multiply that, we get? 8, 15, eight, eight squared, squared of 15. 15. Exactly. And then we have to do the last pair. And the last pair says we're going to do what? The 4 squared. 4 squared of 5. Times the 4 squared of 5. Times negative 4 squared yeah, of negative. 5, right? Because there was a minus in front of that last one. So we would get negative 16. Negative 16 square root, 25. square root of 25. And we can simplify that one. Square root of 25 is 5. five. So we're going to take negative 16 times 5. Negative 80. Negative 80. So on this one again, we've got some like terms to combine. What can we do? We can do the 12 and the 80. 12 minus 80 gives me? 68. What's my sign? Negative. Negative 68. And what happens when I do the negative 8 squared of 15 and the 8 squared of 15? You just add 16 squared 15. Whoops. What's a negative? negative 8 and a positive 8, right? Yeah. What's a negative 8 and a positive 8? Oh, zero. It's zero. They cancel each other out. They're opposites. Those are just gone. So my answer on this one? Just the negative 68. 
So notice when you look at that, when we foiled that out, these are those conjugate things where we have the exact same terms, just the opposite sign was in the middle. And so when you multiply something like that, everything cancels out except for the numbers, and then you can combine the numbers, and there you got one answer. We'll use that later. <laughs> The next one says rationalizing the denominator that has a square root in the denominator. So basically all you do to rationalize the denominator is you multiply by whatever's in the denominator so you can make a perfect square. So on these first ones, here I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 11. That's going to make an equivalent fraction. So. 5 times the square root of 11, we just write 5 square root of 11. We can't combine them because one's under the square root and one is not. On the bottom, however, when you take the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, you get the square root of? You multiply. Yep, you multiply the 11 times the 11. The square root of 121. Now, 121 should be a perfect square, just like on those previous ones. When I had square root of 5 times square root of 5, we got the square root of 25. The square root of 11 times the square root of 11 gives us the square root of 121. And what's the square root of 121? Jeez, I had one of those papers, you know. Grab your calculator. Okay. Let's use the square root key on that. Oh, I don't use the carrot key, right? Nope, you use the square root symbol. Equals minus error. Eleven? Eleven. Right. Because we had to take eleven times eleven. So now we have five square root of eleven over eleven. Now, the only way we could simplify it is the front numbers you could reduce. You can't reduce something with a square root and something without a square root. So we can't reduce this one. We're done. This is just going to be my answer then. So the whole thing here is we multiplied by the same thing as the denominator, which made it a perfect square and gave us that number, right? So on the second one, 2 over the square root of 3, what are we going to multiply by? Three. The square root of 3. So square root of 3 times the top and the square root of 3 times the bottom. So on the top we're going to get? Square root of 6. Nope. 2. 2 square root, of square three. root of 3. If this 2 was also under a square root, then we'd get the square root of 6 because we could multiply them. But since they're not both under square roots, we can't put them together. We just write it as 2 square root of 3. On the bottom we're going to get? Square root of 9, which should be a perfect square, and the square root of 9 is just 3. So we're going to have 2 square root of 3 over 3, and that's going to be my answer because, again, I can't simplify the 2 thirds. So on number 6, if I want to rationalize my denominator, the first thing I'm going to do is Times by, the times by the square root of 3 again. So we're going to get 6 square root of 3 over square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. 3. So we have 6 square root of 3 over 3. Now this one we can simplify because we can reduce the 6 and the 3, right? Yep. So 3 goes into here once and into here two times, I just get 2 square root of 3 because I don't need to put it over the 1 on the bottom. Now when we do the next three, they're going to be very similar to what we did here, only now we're also going to have square roots on the tops sometimes and various other things. So number seven, first of all they want to get across that if the whole fraction is under the square root, I can rewrite it as the square root of 11 over the square root of 2.
I then want to rationalize the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by what did we do on the previous ones? the square root of 2. When it says rationalize the denominator, they want you to make the denominator so it doesn't have that square root anymore, so that's why we make it that perfect square. So we're going to multiply by the square root of 2, both on the top and on the bottom. Now on these ones, since the top is already underneath the square root, now I can multiply. Square root of 11 times the square root of 2 would be square root of 22. And on the bottom, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 square root of 4. Now the top one with 22, I can't simplify it because it doesn't have any factors that are perfect squares, but the bottom we can make square root of 4 is 2. It's just a nice whole number 2. It's not under the square root anymore. So we get the square root of 22 over 2. Now again on these... When I do this, I don't find a common denominator for both the numbers, just the bottom part. Yeah, you're just doing the bottom, you're okay. working with the denominator. Okay. When you type this one into the computer again, you have to be careful because you don't want the square root over the entire fraction like it was on the beginning. You only want the square root over the top. So press the fraction button first and type the top and the bottom in separately. Otherwise you get the square root over the whole thing and you just want the square root over the top. So make yourself a little note, click the fraction button first and then type the top and bottom. Are you taking this or can I keep this? You're going to keep that for a while. You'll turn it in eventually. <laughs> I'm putting my little notes on here. Right. Now, number eight, again, we're rationalizing the denominator, but if you look at that fraction, 5 over 30, what can you do with that? You can, um, um, you can yeah. reduce it, right? Yeah, reduce and you want to reduce it first so your numbers aren't so big, because you wouldn't want to take the square root of 30 times the square root of 30. You'd have a huge number. So we're going to reduce it first. 5 goes into there once and into there six times, right? So now I'm going to have the square root of 1 over the square root of 6. We want to rationalize the denominator, so what are we going to do? Do what? Or multiply it by 6. Multiply it by square root well, square of 6, root. right? So on the top, square root of 1 times the square root of 6 is? the square root of 6, and on the bottom, square root of 6 times the square root of 6, <laughs> 36. square root of 36. Now again, on this one, we can't simplify the top, but we can simplify the bottom. The bottom's going to be Three. square root of 36. Oh, 36. That's oh. what we got there, right? Yep, 6. 6. Not under a square root anymore. So the top is under the square root, we have the square root of 6, but the bottom is just the nice plain whole number 6. And that's what they mean by rationalizing the denominator, getting that square root off the bottom number. So, number 9, what should we do with number 9 first? Well, you can't break it down. Can't reduce it. You're right. So it's going to be square, um, to multiply it by 3. We're going to multiply it by what? Square, square root of 3. Check five. that again. The 5. The five's on the bottom. That's the one oh, yeah. we want to fix. So first of all, I'm going to rewrite it as square root of 3 over the square root of 5. I'm then going to multiply by the square root of 5 to rationalize the denominator. And so on top, I'm going to have square root of 15. 
On the bottom I'm going to have 25. square root of 25. I'm then going to simplify that bottom. The square root of 25 is that nice whole number 5. And so I get the square root of 15 over a plain old 5 for my answer. All right. The next three now tells us to rationalize the denominator using conjugates. Conjugates, those are the ones where we foiled, where one had a plus sign and one had a minus sign, but we had the exact same terms. So, when they tell us to rationalize the denominator, they just want that plain whole number, one number answer. So what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by 5 plus 2 square root of 2. Same two terms as the denominator, just with the opposite sign, because we found out when we foiled that, all that stuff canceled out of there, right? On the top, we're just going to multiply it out using our distributive property. So negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Negative 3 times 2 square root of 2 would be negative 6 square root of 2, right? Okay? Bottom. That's the one we have to foil out. I'm not going to write it out the big long way I did before, but I'm just going to do it here. 5 times 5, we know is 25. 5 times the 2 square root of 2, 10 square root of 2. Inside, negative 2 square root of 2 times 5, minus 10 square root of 2. And then negative 2 square root of 2 times a positive 2 square root of 2 would be negative 4 square root of 4. Looking at that to simplify it, notice we have a positive 10 square root of 2 and a negative 10 square root of 2. Those are going to cancel because they're opposites. And then on that last one, we have that square root of 4 that we can rewrite. The square root of 4 is just a 2, so we have 4 times 2, which is minus 8. So now on the bottom, we have 25 minus 8. 25 minus 8 would be 17. 17. So our answer is that we have negative 15 minus 6 square root of 2 all over 17. And again on this one, you want to hit the fraction thing first and type the top separately from the bottom because you want this negative up with the 15, not in front of the fraction. So you have to type them in separately. So looking at that next one, we want to rationalize the denominator. There's two things on the bottom, so we got to multiply by the conjugate. And our conjugate's going to be 4 square root of 2 plus 2 then. The same thing as the bottom, just with the opposite sign in the middle. So when we multiply that, 5 times 4 square root of 2 would give me 20 square root of 2, exactly. And then 5 times 2? 10. 10, plus 10. So we got the top done. The top was easy. <laughs> now we're going to foil the bottom. So 4 square root of 2 times 4 square root of 2. 16 squared, 4. Yep, and we'll worry about simplifying that later after we're done multiplying. Now we're going to take the 4 squared of 2 times the 2. Okay. 8 squared, 8 4. square root of, 8 square root of, 
just the two because there's nothing to multiply it by, right? So we took the two oh, times okay. the four, but then that is going to stay eight square root of two because there wasn't a square root on the other one. Then we got to do the inside. The inside says take negative two times four square root of two. That's going to be negative eight. Negative eight square root of two, right? And then the last two, negative two times a positive two. Negative four. So, now that we've got the bottom foiled out, what's going to happen with that? We are going to take this 16 square root, or should we do the, oh no, you guys just said number, negative four. First of all, we can cancel those two, right? Oh yeah, we can. We, we better be able to, because that was the whole point of using the conjugate. Okay. Then we can simplify this one. Square root of 4 is? 4. Square root of 4 is? <laughs> two. 2. 2 times 16? 32. 2 times 16 should be 32. And so now we have 32 minus that 4 on the end. And 32 minus 4 is 28. So, we have 20 square root of 2 plus 10 over 28. We're not quite done because we can simplify that fraction. Why do you suppose we can simplify that fraction? We couldn't simplify the top one, but we can simplify this one because all of these numbers here are all divisible by 2, right? Yeah. So I can reduce it down. I'm going to divide by that 2 and make this 10 and make this 5 and make this 14. Notice you're not doing the square root, just those whole numbers. So we have 10 square root of 2 plus 5 over 14 for a crazy looking answer. Number 12. We want to rationalize the denominator, so what should we multiply by? Three. <laughs> Look at your previous ones. Oh, five plus square root of three. You're getting closer. <laughs> What do we have to do with the sign? What sign? The sign of that bottom thing when you multiplied. Oh. You multiplied by what they call the conjugate. You have to use 5 minus 2 square root of 3. So that when you FOIL, you get those opposites in the middle that you can cancel out. So we're going to multiply by 5 minus 2 square root of 3. And so on the top, we're going to get 10 square root of 3. Plus 10 square root of 2. Now we got to foil out the bottom. So on the bottom, when you foil that out, you're going to get 25 plus 4. Where are you getting that from? <laughs> 2 times a negative. 
Now you get to foil it, so I had, you did this times this, yeah. but now you get to do this times this, right? So negative 10. Negative 10 squared of 3. Then you get to do the inside, which is going to be? It's going to be 10. Positive 10 square root of 3. Then I can do the last, which will be? <laughs> two square as long three. as you're talking with me, I can do it. So two square to three times negative two square to three. Okay. Negative four. Negative four square root of six. Three. Three times three is nine. Nine. So, what can we do with the bottom part? Okay, you can um, cancel out the negative 10 square 3. And the positive 10 square 3. And the positive 10 square 3. And then we can simplify that last term. Yep, the 9. Square root of 9 is? 3. 3, 3 times our minus 4. 12, negative 12. So we have 25 minus 12 on the bottom. Twenty-five minus twelve gives us thirteen. So we have negative twenty-five plus ten square root of three all over thirteen. This one we can't reduce because we can't reduce the ten, thirteen, and twenty-five by the same thing. All three of them have to be able to be divided by the same thing. All right, now we're still rationalizing the denominator, but notice the tops got a little more complicated than the ones we just did, right? Yep. <laughs> but we're still doing the same thing. I want to rationalize the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom, which means on the first one we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 plus 1. So now we have to FOIL both the top and the bottom. So 5 square root of 3 times the square root of 3 would be 5 square root of 9, right? So just multiplying the square roots together. 5 square root of 3 times a 1 would just be 5 square root of 3. Negative 2 times the square root of 3. Negative 2 squared of 3. And then negative 2 times a positive 1 minus 2. So on the top looking at that, to try to simplify it, I have the square root of 9 that I can simplify. The square root of 9 is just a 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. So I've got 15 minus 2. 15 minus 2 is going to give me 13. And then I've got a 5 squared of 3 minus a 2 squared of 3. I'm just going to do the front numbers. 5 minus 2 is 3. So I get plus 3 square root of 3. So I rewrote the top over here after I combined all my terms. On the bottom, I'm going to FOIL that out. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 would be square root of 9. Square root of 3 times a positive 1 is a positive square root of 3, or positive 1 square root of 3 if you want to write the 1. On the inside, negative 1 times the square root of 3 is negative square root of 3, or negative 1 square root of 3. And then the last, negative 1 times a positive 1 is a negative 1. Now we know on the bottom when we simplify that, that the middle term should be opposites and will cancel out. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 1 is going to give me 2. 
So on the top we had 13 plus 3 square to 3, on the bottom we just get a plain old 2. Again, we can't reduce any farther because I can't divide all three of them by the same thing. So that's just going to be my answer. So looking at number 14. I want to rationalize the denominator. What should I multiply both the top and the bottom by? Square root of 11 plus the square root of 2. Exactly. So we're going to FOIL on the top. Square root of 11 times square root of 11. Square root of 121. We'll worry about simplifying later. We're just going to FOIL it first. Square root of 11 times the square root of 2. 22. Square root of 22. On the inside, square root of 2 times the square root of 11. 22. Another square root of 22. And then the last, square root of 2 times square root of 2. 4. Square root of 4. So, looking at simplifying that, 121 is a perfect square, right? The square root of 121 was 11. 11. So this is a nice whole number, 11. Also, the one on the end is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2. two. So since these are both nice whole numbers, we can add those together. 11 plus 2 gives me 13. I'm going to write that over here because that's part of our answer, right? Then I have to combine the two middle ones. Now this is where people get confused because think about what we did up here. We had 5 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 3's. We're combining just the front numbers. Here this is 1 square root of 22 plus another 1 square root of 22. And 1 plus 1 is 2, two square root of 22. We've got the top all done. <laughs> we can do the bottom. So on the bottom, when we FOIL that out, square root of 11 times the square root of 11. Square root of 121. Then we do the outside. Square root of 11 times the square root of 2. Positive square root of 22. The inside, negative square root of 2 times the square root of 11. Minus the square root of 22. And then last, negative square root of 2 times positive square root of 2. 4. Negative square root of 4, right? Positive times a negative is a negative. So simplifying that, what can we do to simplify that? Okay, um, you can cancel out the 22. Cancels out the 22's. You can do the 4. So 2 square root of 2. So we have square root of 4 is just 2. So we have a minus 2 on the end. And then, um, minus 2 at the end? Yep, because we did this 4. Oh, okay. And the square root of 121 was? 11. 11. So on the bottom we have 11 minus 2, right? 11, yeah. 11 minus 2 is? 9. 9. And again, we can't reduce that one. So 13 plus 2 squared of 2 all over 9 is my answer. One last one on the page. <laughs> so, I can't move my board any higher than that. We'll go with that far. What would my conjugate be that I want to multiply by? It's going to be square root 6 plus 2. Exactly. Square root of 6 plus 2 times the top and times the bottom. So on the top, foiling that out, 3 square root of 6 times the square root of 6. 3 squared, 36. Exactly, 3 square root of 36. And then we have the outside, the 3 square root of 6 times the 2. Plus 2, um, it's going to be 3 squared, 12. 
No? Oh, what'd you say? The 3 squared of 6 times a plain 2. There's not a square root over that 2. So what do we multiply together? Oh, just the 6. What are we going to get? Oh. You take 3 squared of 6 times a plain old so 2. So we're going to multiply just the 2 and the 3? Right. 3 times 2 is 6. Square root of 6 then. 6 squared of 6. Then we're going to multiply the inside together. We've got a 5 times the square root of 6. <laughs> no? 5 times. So the plus. Oh, so it's going to be 5 square root of 6. Exactly. They're not both under square root, so I just put them together. Then we got on the end 5 times 2. Plus 10. Okay, so simplifying that. We can simplify that first term. Yeah, by 6. And make that 6. So we have 6 times 3 18. is 18. So now we can combine our 18 with our 10, right? Yep. 18 plus 10 is 28. 28. Then we can also combine our inside pairs, because they both are square root of 6's. If I take a 6 squared of 6 plus a 5 squared of 6, I get 11. 11 square root of 6. Just adding the front numbers. We got the top all simplified. Now we can foil the bottom. So, foiling the bottom, square root of 6 times square root of 6. Square root of 36. The outside, square root of 6 times a plain old 2. Two, 2 square root of 6. Exactly. 2 square root of 6 is what you get. On the inside, negative 2 times the square root of 6. Negative 2. Negative 2 square root of 6. And then the end pair, negative 2 times a positive 2. Oh, positive 4. Oh, negative, negative times a positive four. is a negative 4. So, simplifying that. So those two can cancel out. Cancel out the middle, yep. Yeah. And then you can bring that to the square root, I mean, you can... Do the square root of 36 to 6, six yep. Yeah. So it's going to be square root of 6 minus 4. Not a square root of 6, it's just a plain 6. Right? The square root of 36 is 6, not square root of 6. Oh, just 6. It's just 6. So 6 minus 4 is 6 two. minus 4 is 2. 2. Now, again, I cannot reduce this one. Even though these are both divisible by 2, 11 is not. So I can't do it. If that was an even number in front of my square root, then I would have been able to reduce. I can only simplify if all three of them are divisible by the same thing. All right, that is the end of everything in that review section.